There's a few children here. If you would like to go over to the activity table, feel free any time to pop over there. You don't have to sit. If you'd like to sit here and listen to me, that's terrific as well. I'm certainly not against that, but uh, there isn't some activities over there if you would like to go over to the activity table. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, as I said in the introduction, is Holy Family Sunday. It's the time once every three years where the church celebrates the Holy Family. That's Mary and Joseph and Jesus, of course. But in the bigger picture, we celebrate the fact that we are all part of God's family. We are God's holy family because he chose us. He adopted us. We belong to him. And so while we celebrate holy family and we hear this story of Jesus in the temple, we are reminded that who we are, our identity, is formed by God's decision, by his will, by his choice. Not by anything that we've done, We are recipients of grace. We are recipients of the mercy, the love, the Holy Spirit of God, his empowerment. We are who we are because of the goodness of God. And we celebrate that. We are his holy family. It's great. It's wonderful. And we hear this story of Jesus. Sometimes we think this is every parent's worst nightmare, right? Here are a couple of parents gone to a big festival and they lose their child. And any parent who's lost their child, even for a few minutes, know the terror that goes down. (gasps) What's happened to them? Are they all right? We can all relate to that. And I recall when I was growing up, Um, We had a reasonably big family and it was commonplace for aunties and uncles to look after the children. It didn't matter if it was your children or not. If the children were with you, you were theirs and you looked after them. So you can understand how uh, Joseph and Mary could have easily misplaced Jesus. I'm sure that I was misplaced many times when I was growing up. In fact, I recall... um, one time we, we had a, a wonderful family event and it was at this place and once again, it didn't matter whose child you were, all the adults had the uh, opportunity to look after but also discipline the children as well. And uh, my cousin and I were doing things that normal boys would do. We picked up rocks and we were throwing them at the windows, which is what normal boys do, right? And my uncle decided that as the responsible adult and the one in the vicinity, he took it upon himself to discipline us in the way which discipline was meted out in those days. It was a normal thing. Families look after each other, look after discipline, etc. This whole idea of a wider family is what we're thinking about today. And it's a bit foreign Because as time's gone on, the families have become smaller and smaller and more nuclear, haven't they? I even look at when I was a child, not so so long ago, when I was a child, stop laughing. (laughs) There was much more interaction with the families. But these days people are busy and there is not the opportunity. People travel. The whole idea of a wider family connecting is not quite as prevalent as it was. And yet, this scripture, in so many ways, reminds us that we are connected in a much wider family and we have responsibility for each other. Just as Mary and Joseph thought, yep, Jesus is going to be with a whole bunch of people over here and they will be responsible for him. We are responsible for each other as children of God. We don't make this journey alone. We have the right to expect encouragement and love and support from other people. It also puts a responsibility onto each one of us that this is not a nuclear family where I come along and I can do my thing 
completely disregarding or independent of everybody else because that's not how God's family works. It's the family of God, just like any other family. We have responsibilities for one another. In a normal family, if somebody's hurting, if someone's in trouble, you just don't ignore it and go, gee, I'll hope things work out for you. That doesn't happen in a normal family. You say, if it's your problem, it's my problem. We'll work on this together. And we are formed as the family of God through his Holy Spirit, through his word, through each other. Sometimes we're good at that, sometimes we're not. It's the nature of being human. Sometimes we think, oh, I'd love to help that person. I'm too busy, I've got all this other stuff. Remember those times? Well, how many times have we said, oh, I believe that person is in trouble, I hope somebody's looking after them. We've all said that. I hope somebody's looking after them. And yet, oftentimes, it's when God prompts us and we think about somebody that he's asking us. You're the person I'm asking. Give him a call. Give him a text. See how things are going. This is what God calls us to do, to be family. You see, Jesus was formed through a wide family and through his worship at the temple. Jesus was a regular worshiper at the temple. We see it in the scripture Temple was very important for identity, for faith, for family. It was all tied in together. You couldn't dissect it and say, oh, this is who I am. This is my faith. This is... Nothing was personal and private. It was all communal. And if we see the emphasis that the gospel writers put on the temple... From the time when Zechariah was serving in the temple and it was, oh, your wife Elizabeth's going to, be, going to have a baby to announce the Messiah. Right till the end, when the disciples come back to the temple and they see Jesus ascending into heaven and they stay there worshipping. Jesus' final week of his life is spent in and around the temple. The temple's a really important part when Jesus was going about the Father's business, it started at the temple. It didn't finish there. He went out and did his stuff, but it started and ended at the temple. Because the scripture tells us that the temple is where God resides. That's where we can be certain of his presence. And for us, it's the same. We come to church, and we've said before, when we come and we gather in the name of Jesus, God guarantees to be present we are in his holy space when we gather to worship and he promises that he will turn up. Now, God also is in other places as well. We know that we can encounter God on a walk or in nature. We don't put God in a box. We don't try and say he can only be found here. What we can say is that God is always here in worship, just like Jesus recognized that his father was present in the temple. When they said, what are you doing here, boy? You scared us half to death. He said, I was in the temple because that's where my father is. That's where God is. I was connecting with him. He couldn't believe that his parents were so dumb. You're the one that taught me. I experienced my father at church. And you wonder why I'm here. We too guaranteed to encounter God when we come to worship. We're formed as well as family when we start off by this encounter with God here in worship. Jesus starts at the temple and he goes out from the temple. He goes out to all over the place speaking about the mission that he's been given to bring the truth, to bring the light to all people, to bring salvation, to bring a future, to bring hope, all these things that we know of. We too, as the family of God, have this privilege of connecting with him 
and then being called to do his business. To do his business here with each other and to do his business wherever he calls us. Wherever he calls us in the world to be the light. To bring the truth in whatever situation we find ourselves. It's common to want to do what your father does. How many times do you see businesses, such and such, and children or son, whatever, right? It's common to follow in your father or mother's occupation. I remember when I was growing up, my best friend, terrific guy, young fella called Tim, he went and he studied... Um, he studied accounting and then after that he went and did fitting and turning. But after all those things, he went and worked with his dad as a roof tiler. And that's where he was happy for the rest of his life. He tried doing other things. He said, I don't want to do what my dad does. I'm going out on my own. What you did, dad being up there breaking your back with those roof tiles, I want to be doing that. But of course, in the end, he, was, he found that that's where he, uh, he belonged. That's where he wanted to be. And I'm not saying that everybody does that, but it is a natural thing. I remember uh, my dad was a greenkeeper. Now, the idea of cutting grass all day was not my idea of heaven, I've got to say. But my brother-in-law was a carpenter, and I thought, I could do that. And I like him. I'd like hanging around him all day. What a cool thing. Of course, I realised that I was no good with a hammer, which is a significant disadvantage if you're going to be a carpenter, right? See, these days they've got nail guns. If I was... No, no, no. If, no, no, no. It's true. No. They've got all that electrical stuff now. I would have been a great apprentice. No. It's natural for us to want to be with the people that we love and look up to. If I can do the same thing as my parents or the people that I admire, I can be with them all the time. This is all Jesus was doing. My Father in heaven is the person I love the most. I just want to be with him. I want to do his business. Whatever he's doing, I want to do that. Don't you remember when you were a kid and somebody who you loved and idolized, whatever they were doing, you wanted to do that. That's true for us now, just like Jesus, whatever the Father's doing. I want to do that. I want to be doing what you're doing. I remember when our children were small. It didn't matter what we were doing. They wanted to be in the middle of it. Right in the beginning. It didn't matter if they were good or not. It didn't matter. We often used to joke that we could get the shopping done in 40 minutes without the children, or two and a half hours with the children, right? They wanted to be involved. I'll pick this off the shelf. Well, of course you will, you know? I'll help you with that. Didn't matter what we were doing. They wanted to be there in the middle of it. Isn't that true? For us, as the people of God, whatever God the Father is doing, we want to be doing that. We want to be part of that. Why should he have all the fun on his own? I want to get involved in that. We're formed. We're formed as we come into contact with God in worship. Each of us encourages when we come into worship. We do the Father's business together as a community because we hunger to connect with him to do his business. And we look at Jesus and his response to Mary and Joseph was really saying, I'm just prioritizing my life. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, I could have come back and been with you and as you were traveling with the caravan. But I knew it was important at this point in my life, just, he wasn't even a man, you know, he says that he was a 12-year-old. He hadn't had his bar mitzvah. He wasn't officially a Jewish man. 
it was important for him to soak up as much of his father's presence as possible. It was important for him to engage in the teaching, to hear. He was being a rabbi at 12 in the temple courts. This is what he was called to be. He didn't want to do anything else. That's what he was doing. He was prioritizing and saying, what God the Father has called me to do is something that I'm going to put at the top of my list. You see, this is something that he's encouraging us to do as well. Because we can go through our entire life and that can, can, that can fall down. It might start at the top of our list, but then it gets to second place or third or fourth or fifth. And God is gracious and kind and forgiving and he says, I understand you're busy. I understand things are getting in the way. But don't forget me. Don't make me tenth priority. You see, when Jesus was a boy, he said to his earthly parents, and you think about the courage that that took. When Mary says, why have you done this to me? That was an accusation. You're a disobedient child. And he says, I didn't want to hurt you. The last thing I ever wanted to do was to cause you trouble. But I was prioritizing my life. This is where I needed to be. Sometimes we can be in that situation where God asks us to prioritize him. And when we prioritize him, sometimes it can upset other people. But these are the times we need to trust him and say, if I do prioritize, if I'm doing your business, I'm being formed as your family, then I trust that if I am causing, if I'm offending somebody, I'm doing it because you've asked me to do it. And I'm doing it with your presence, with your blessing, with your guidance, with you at the center of it. We do know that each one of us, as children of God, will face that situation. There's no doubt about that. There is no doubt that there will be conflicting priorities in our life. It's not a matter of, oh, that might happen to those people over there. It happens to all of us. Every single one of us is confronted at some point with saying, what is my priority? Is my priority what God the Father is asking me to do or is my priority something else? And we have to make that decision. We are called just like... uh, to, to. hear and see Jesus' example, and we are called to make that decision too. So as we celebrate Christmas, and we see the beautiful lights, and we recognize that God is here, right with us today, present with us, forgiving us and renewing us, empowering us, commissioning us, forming us as family. Let's not forget that. Forming us as family. May we be attentive to what he's calling us to do in his business. May we be attentive to what he wants from us as a community. And may we think over these next few days, perhaps we've got some time off, what are our priorities? You know, in a couple of days' time, it's uh, New Year's Day. A couple, and we can make some resolutions not that they ever work I was going to say oh, has anybody ever had a successful New Year's resolution? No, of course you haven't <laughs> so, but it is a good opportunity where are my priorities? and what are my priorities for this next year? am I going to do the Father's business? am I going to say I know you've put this call, and I'm excited. I want to be where you are, God. I want to be doing your business. And I trust that you're going to be with me as I step out in faith. Why don't we pray? Lord, it is great to be here celebrating Christmas. It's great as we see and hear 
not just the birth and the incarnation of Jesus, but we hear the story of him as a boy, where he prioritized the Father's business and he was formed through the faith community and worship and your presence. We pray, Lord, that you would give us a heart for your business, that you would burn inside of us and that we would be formed as a faith family, focusing on your call, prioritizing your call in our life. We thank you that we have this opportunity to be here receiving from you and worshiping. Be with us always. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing our next song, during which our free will offerings will be accepted.